Hey everybody, welcome to Thursday Reading Smoke with Phil Jost. I'm Phil Jost, let's get started. Hey, um, thanks to the 911 video, let me get this thing started because we start actually uh, back from the incident scene. And uh, for those of you who follow also the SBS case, uh, that Nick and I both use the same video two days in a row. Uh, that tells you that we're not talking to each other a lot. <laughs> uh, each of us is trying to create content for our day. So, um, you know, that's that's good enough. But uh, anyway, we're we're here today uh, at this fire. This is the San Diego Fire Department. And uh, we can see, you know, already uh, now we're right here up front, right? So they're just getting ready to make entry. The door's open. You know, we could we could probably kibitz a little about having that door, pulling that door closed with the tool uh, while we're waiting. But it's also good to get uh, the door open just long enough for you to get a read on what's happening inside the fire building, right? So uh, one of the things that we're going to see here, right, the neutral plane's right around the address number right here, right? So I, I'm guessing that's four and a half or five feet. Um, it's not all the way to the top, it's not all the way to the bottom, it's in the middle. Generally speaking, if the um, neutral plane's in the middle third of the door from like here to here, you're, uh, or, you know, from here to here, you're talking about a fire on the same floor. And uh, if it's way, way at the top, in the top foot, or maybe even just top couple inches, that fire's probably on the floor above. And if you open this door and it's 100% exhaust, uh, you're basically telling, it's basically telling you that the fire's on the floor below, right? So this is a pretty good indicator that we have uh, fire on the same floor, which it's a one-story, right? So um, it's probably a slap on grade if, uh, from my time in San Diego, you know, when I visit and stuff. Um, but it's probably a slap on grade, so there probably is no floor below. But anytime we get an opportunity, we want to look at these things, and when the when we can we can say, hey, that's what it looks like. Uh, we want to take the example, right? This is the example that proves the rule that the fire is on the same floor. Now. One of the things, one of the reasons that I chose this video uh, was uh, if you're if you're an IC, if you're a chief officer, if you're standing outside, one of the things you got to do is have an understanding of what's going on in the building from the reading smoke process. And and uh, for me, um, that I, I learned from Dave Dotson going to his class and all that kind of thing, um, and then practicing as much as I can on my own when I was at work, but. Um, one of the reasons that um, I was so happy to take over the curriculum from Dave when he asked me to uh, was that uh, it always proved, for me, it always proved to be valuable insight into what was going on in the structure. So uh, we got a fire on the same floor. It's probably a little remote from the store. We have a pretty significant amount of turbulent thick black smoke, but not huge billowing. It's not like it's the air tracks all the way down here, right? So I'm guessing, my my sense would be that this fire is just a little bit remote, but once that companies go through the door, right? Now, um, this is all building your mental model, right? So once they go through this door, look at the size of this house and understand that uh, it should be a relatively short trip for them to the fire compartment, right? Now, um, good neutral plane up high, good visibility probably down low. Uh, below the neutral plane, I'm, I'm guessing they, they can see really, really well. And the air that's going in the neutral plane, remember that that fresh air is headed to the fire compartment, right? So as you're going in there, it's gonna be dragging some smoke off of the bottom of the thermal layer, and you can just follow that right to the seat of the fire. And with good visibility, relatively small house, and not huge amounts of turbulent thick black smoke over their head, they're able to do that uh, with the line closed, right? So they're able to move into position and then hit. And so from the perspective of the chief officer outside, or if you're a division or something like that, and you're watching this happen, you should have some sort of expectation about what the rhythm and flow of your organization is and once they get through the store, about how long, and I'm not talking about having a stopwatch out there, I'm talking about having a really good sense of how long before something good should happen. And what's good? Good means that uh, decrease, always decrease in volume, velocity, density, color. So let's get it rolling here. 
and they're going to take, they're going to get in, right? And we're seeing, you know, we're also seeing that there's a little bit coming from the attic, and those are all things that we have to check on later. Uh, but the main thing we have now is we have a fire attack underway. And I noticed that uh, this last person is not getting too far in, right? So they're, they're going to be feeding the hose, but it's probably not too far in a relatively short order. We're going to see some bellowing here on occasion, but in a relatively short order. The overall, the, the thing that's most notable here is that the density is way down. All of a sudden you can see, right, let's go back, right? You can't, you can't see the gutter or anything through the smoke because of the density. Now we get to, we'll just let it develop again, right? You're not, you're not seeing through it. When it goes away, right, you can see the gutter, but most of the time you can't see through there. What we're gonna see is right away in the next 15 to 20 seconds, we're gonna see that density in particular is gonna drop pretty fast. And then relatively quickly after that, the neutral plane is gonna rise up and the color is gonna change, right? So. Uh, we'll just let that happen. I mean, see, look at significant decrease. Now it's going to build a little bit here and there, but a significant change in relatively short time period from them being inside there. So velocity's down, volume's down, and um, you know, so it's not as turbid now. That's from the attic, right? So we're even with a little bit of change there. That attic is that attic's still hot. That's okay. We got to take care of that, but that's not our primary problem. Our primary problem is the fire in the building and then getting that search done. Then we can look at overhauling the space. And notice that color's way better here. And this is all, um, all of this, I mean, credit to San Diego, right? All of this is in, uh, done in the time it takes just to get this uh, four inch stretch to the hydrant. At least I think that's, maybe it's five. It doesn't matter, supply line stretch to the hydrant. Uh, driver saying, hey, you know, let's, let's charge it and probably really minimal actual use of water. I, I'd be surprised if they use more than like 150 gallons in their, in their initial fire attack. Now, there's plenty of work to be done. There's plenty more. We gotta get in the attic. We gotta check the overhead. We gotta do all that stuff. But within a relatively tight time frame, we have a pretty significant change in the neutral plane. Now, um, there's a history, and if I was, when I teach my eight hour class, we talk about this fire in Seattle called the Dog Gate Fire, and I'm not going to go into all the detail here because it's a long story. But suffice it to say, when they went through, there was a small house like this, they went through the front door, neutral plane's up pretty high, the engine got bogged down, and this neutral plane went down and down and down and down and down to the point that uh, it was really about a foot from the ground with just a screaming um, pile of air just pounding in there at the bottom, right? I mean, just, I mean, really uh, fast movement in, uh, turbulent thick black smoke up over the top. And so that's what you gotta be watching for is this gets better, right? That's what you want. If this gets worse and worse and worse, some at some point that clock in your head's gotta go, wait a minute, that engine company, they should be to the fire room by now. They should be there, and if they're not there, um, then we just <laughs> we need to just understand. Maybe we have to we have to send an officer in there to check on things. Maybe we have to call them on the radio. Hey, dude, thanks for showing up. And uh, dude's here in the chat, and I know we've got a, a, a couple of people here watching the show live, which is great. Um, but that's what we're that's what we're looking for. And soon, when this when this gets starts going down, 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 and that timer is going off in your head, you just need to do something about it, right? I mean, call them on the radio, uh, send somebody to check on them, um, maybe even ask them, are they flowing water in there? Like, like take some action as the IC. Don't wait until it's flame coming out this front door. You see a bunch of people bailing out, right? Don't wait for that. Uh, get there a little bit early. Okay, so back in here, uh, much higher neutral plane, uh, changing color, changing all our VVDCs, getting better, and that's what we want to see. Right now we know we're winning. These are the neighbors uh, getting evacuated from the house next door. And uh, there's still plenty of time left in the video, right? There's another three minutes, uh, but largely San Diego has solved this problem, right? Water's on the fire, I'm guessing, uh, the, pretty soon here you're going to see the windows opening up and stuff, so there's active searching going on. 
wouldn't take that long, right? With that neutral plane lifts up, really good visibility, makes for fast searches and fast recoveries if there's people inside. Then we're just stuck with the work of overhaul, uh, which is everybody's favorite part, right? Um, so anyway, hey, thanks for being here today. And thanks for anytime you tune in, thanks. Uh, as always in the show notes um, here, you can see my teaching schedule. Um, if I have a link for a registration, that's also in there, so you can just click on it. I just got back from Bastrop, Texas. A uh, great trip down there. Uh, really enjoyed the class and the students down there. And um, looking forward to a pretty active teaching uh, schedule in the fall. So hope to see you out there. If you're a fan of the show and you get a chance to come to one of my uh, training days uh, where I'm teaching the art of reading smoke or even my tactical decision making class, which I do that fairly often. Either one of those, if you're at the show, please say hello. I love I love to meet people and talk about uh, what we can do on YouTube together and uh, maybe how uh, I can all I can do I can do this program even better to suit your needs. So as always, uh, this is uh, Reading Smoke with Phil Jose. I'm Phil Jose and I'm out.